Welcome back to Switched to Linux. Well, today we want to talk about don't throw out that old computer. Why are we talking about this? Well, the couple things that have happened uh, in the Windows arena recently. One of those is that Windows 8 support just dropped out. And so now Windows 10 and Windows 11 are the only fully supported Windows operating systems. Of course, um, just now, just a couple days ago, January 31st, Microsoft stopped selling license keys for Windows 10. Now, there are still ways around it as of now. Usually Windows 10 and Windows 11 keys have been fairly interchangeable, so you could use one for the other. The problem is, is that Microsoft is trying to push everybody to Windows 11. The problem that we have with this particularly at this time in history, is the Windows 11 system requirements are so high that only a small fraction of computers actually qualify for that. And this means that you will take your computer that is otherwise perfectly fine and you'll just have to get rid of it. And as you get rid of it, then what you're going to have to do is buy another computer. Now, we are in the middle, uh, or the very beginning, I should say, of a global recession. A lot of people are losing their jobs. A lot of people do not have extra money laying around. I mean, if you eat eggs, you have no money left. I mean, come on, guys. But the reality is, we have to use what we have. And for the average person, the average home user, you don't need a Windows system. You need an operating system. Well, you can take that old Windows 8 system that is no longer getting support updates. And they're telling you, you need to switch to Windows 11. But then you click the little button. And it's like you, your computer doesn't qualify for Windows 11. Now they want to basically cause half of the world to throw away perfectly fine computers because Microsoft simply ends support. I mean, where's the Greta Thunbergs of the world? How dare you? The reality is you don't need to throw away your computer. You can probably revive it with a Linux distribution. Now, you might be thinking, ah, Linux distribution, isn't that like computer lines and codes? No, it's not. I actually, uh, I've only encountered a couple people in real life that actually believed that. Uh, one person said that to me. I'm like, what are you talking about? Well, I know about computers. I know about Linux. It's all the command line stuff. Uh, apparently, you don't know about anything about Linux, my friend, because no, it is not. In fact, if you use the distribution that I recommend, which is Linux Mint, you really don't have to touch that command line at all. In fact, most Linux distributions these days, you don't have to. We're going to keep things simple and say, hey, if you're going to investigate a Linux distribution, just look at Linux Mint. There are other really great options out there, but that's the one that's probably going to work for the most for most people out there. Now, it is fairly easy. The first thing that you're going to want to do is make sure you have a backup of all of your files, all your photos, all your music, all your documents, all that kind of stuff. Make sure you have a backup of that. Now, I also always recommend that people try Linux with a USB drive rather than jumping right on into Linux with something like um, just wiping out your entire operating system and putting Linux over it. In fact, I do recommend the slow process as I described in my video on the slowly switching to Linux. However, there are some cases where you need to do it really fast. So I've talked about both of these just in the recent uh, few weeks. It might behoove you to go back and watch one of those two videos or both of those videos to see which is going to be the best option for you. Now, once you're ready to go, and I have videos that are still up to date on all these different steps, um, but uh, in fact, I have a playlist, I'll, I'll link it here on YouTube, where uh, we talk about getting started with Linux. It's a couple years old now, but I think the information is still very accurate. For the most part, you have a couple steps you need to do. The first step is going to be to download the Linux distribution. Head on over to linuxmint.com, hit the download button, and grab the distribution. Depending on the age of your computer, you will either want the Cinnamon or the XFCE. There is that one called Mate, which is pretty good. I just like the XFCE for the smaller, lower system computers, and I like Cinnamon for your more modern system. 
If your computer is newer than four years, Cinnamon will work great. If it's older than four years, you might try the XFCE version instead. All right, so then the next thing you're going to do is there's some steps on there on validating your download. This is going to be the hardest step for the person that's not as uh, knowledgeable on all the computer things, but I do actually have a video on validating your distribution with Windows. So you can find that video, I'll have that linked down below, and uh, you can actually click on that and learn how to validate your distribution. The next thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to install that onto either a CD drive or more likely a USB flash drive. And it works best if you have a USB flash drive that's USB 3.0 or higher. So 3.0, 3.1, or 3.2. Anything lower than that, it will be a lot slower for the testing. All right, and then you need to install that onto that drive, usually using an application called Etcher, which you can find, uh, you can find online. Now, once you have that all set up, you're going to need to boot up your computer into the BIOS mode. And uh, usually this is done when the computer's starting up by pushing either F uh, F11, F12, sometimes F2. Um, and then you're going to get into a screen where you'll have the option to where you want to boot from. You want to hit the button that says enter setup. Now, if you're, if you can't get to that, it means that the modern windows computers, they tend to like bypassing the ability to do that, to go jump right on in unless windows is having a problem. But if you're in the, to the windows operating system, uh, I do forget the steps about these, but there is a way in the system tools to boot into setup on next boot. So that's something that you can find inside of your settings panel. I know it exists, I just don't remember exactly where it is. Sorry, I don't use Windows a whole lot. All right, and then what you need to do is you need to make sure that your computer is set to boot off of a USB drive. Some people also, uh, or some Linux distributions, you will need to disable what is called secure boot. And uh, many of the modern Linux distributions can use that as well. It might be a good step to disable it just for the purpose of testing. And then when you're ready to install it, you can go ahead and re-enable that later. That's just going to make sure that uh, what is loading onto your operating system hasn't been tampered with before your computer boots. That's all that does. But the important setting is to make sure that you go into your boot options and allow the booting off of a USB drive. And what I like to do is, especially if you're going to be dual booting your system, I like moving the um, I like moving the uh, USB drive above the hard drive, so it checks if there's a USB drive. If there is, it boots that. If there's not, it just boots right off the hard drive. You're going to plug that drive right on into your computer, boot it up, and then that's going to allow you to test the Linux distribution before you even install it. You can get around on the internet. You can see how some of the applications work. What The important thing to remember right now is anything you do on that computer will not be saved unless you install it first. Once you are happy that everything's working, you have all of your documents off, you have everything saved onto an external drive somewhere, then you can go ahead and hit the installation button and then you can install the Linux distribution directly to your hard drive and then move your documents back over. In almost every case, the Linux operating system is going to be able to view and interact with your documents the same way you've done before. It might be a few different applications. Now, if you're using some very specific Windows applications, this is where you're going to have to do a little bit of research. Linux uses different types of applications. And while some applications like Firefox or VLC are available on every, um, on every operating system out there, you might find some niche thing that you like somewhere that doesn't have a Linux build. You can head on over to a website called Alternative 2. It's alternative2.net. You can type in that application at the top of the screen, and that's going to give you various alternatives, and you can sort by operating system. So say, hey, what is the alternative to this program for Linux? And then what you do is you boot up the Linux computer, you go to the software center on Linux Mint, and you search for that application. Most likely it's going to be in the software store on Linux Mint. If it's not, look for one that is until you're more comfortable with installing software from other different sources. 
So the overall bottom line here, don't throw away the old computer just because Windows has decided to stop supporting your operating system. You don't have to worry about it. Just go ahead, try out Linux on your system. And the great thing is if you follow the steps I just mentioned here and in the videos I have linked in the description of this video, then what you will actually find is that uh, Linux is easy to use, it's going to be able to replace things, and you can test it out before you even wipe out the hard drive on your computer. So in this downtime, don't look at it and go, oh, I've got to come up with a few hundred dollars to find another computer. You don't need to. All you need to do is test out switching to Linux. Microsoft is the one that wants you to throw your perfectly fine working computer in the trash can, it might be good to simply throw Windows in the trash can, keep your computer, and install Linux distribution, which is available for free. With that, any other questions, ask those in the comments to this video or to have a look at our Matrix community over at Switch to Linux on Matrix. And um, from there, people will be glad to help you out in the comments or, or over there. With that, thanks for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy... Switching to Linux.